Hi, good morning. Uh, at this moment, I will talk about PHP reactive programming or reactive programming in PHP. And what is uh, actually reactive programming and how we can use it in PHP. I also will talk about some of programming paradigms uh, because this is also related with uh, reactive programming. Okay. My name is Dolly Aswin. I come from Indonesia. I start programming in PHP since 2004 and then certified engineer for PHP 5 in, 2000, in 2010 and then framework certified engineer in 2011 and in 2015 I got then framework 2 certified architect. What is uh, reactive programming? Uh, reactive programming has uh, become uh, very popular in the last few years and even though uh, the ideas behind it are, are new, it takes a good part from multiple different programming paradigms. Okay, this is the reactive programming definition. Uh, you can check it on Wikipedia. Reactive programming uh, is a declarative programming paradigm concerned with data stream and the propagation of change. Uh, this means that it becomes uh, possible to express static or dynamic data or dynamic data stream with ease via the employee programming language. Okay, what is the actual uh, programming paradigm? This is the this is programming paradigm. This is a set of concepts defining a style of building and structuring program. Most programming language uh, such as PHP support multiple paradigms. We can also think of this is the mindset of a way we approach pro we approach problem when using such paradigm. Because of uh, reactive programming, use some of programming paradigm. We will take a look uh, programming paradigm use it in reactive programming. Okay, maybe we always hear about it uh, when you hear about reactive programming. These are, these are the programming paradigms used in reactive programming. There is a declarative, a synchronous, and functional. Okay, le le let's talk about them one by one. And what is the declarative programming? Declarative programming is a paradigm focused on describing program logic instead of particular external steps. Mm, on this image, if you talking with your friend and your friend, if you talking with your friend and you want a sandwich, you don't type, you don't type in, it give your friend step by step instruction on how to make the sandwich. If you if you did it, uh, it will feel like uh, programming your friend. If your friend is willing and able to follow your instruction, then he will translate this phrase, "Make me a sandwich." into a series of steps such as uh, the first finding the bread, second remo removing two slices, and, and the third applying toppings. In other words, uh, declarative programming, we define what we want instead of how we want it. And another example of declarative programming, in SQL, we define what data from what table we want to query but the implementation details are completely hidden for us. Then we don't even to worry about how database engine stores the index the data. Okay, uh, we continue to asynchronous. This is the asynchronous example. This asynchronous is minimize idle time by switching the tags. Like in this image, we this is the process for creating new user we maybe this is a common process the first we create new user and then we sending the welcome email then we give to success respond to the client and by asynchronous the the flow will be like this we create the new user then for sending the email we switch the tags and we we don't wait the sending 
welcome email complete we just give the response okay. and this is the the same process but this is uh, using the synchronous programming we we create new user sending the welcome email we wait it complete and then we give success response and the problem how if the internet connection become becoming slow that will affect the process because it need to wait welcome email send then give the success response and automatically it will take much time and maybe make the application freeze and it will be better to start the first process and instead of waiting this process to be completed we do we do another process then later we go back to the process and process the result from where we let them up this is the main idea of uh, asynchronous programming uh, asynchronous is is not same with parallel uh, parallelism is simultaneous execution of multiple things they may be related or maybe not in synchronous in asynchronous we are dealing with a lot of different a lot of different things at once mostly mostly people when they see a synchronous code immediately think the stuff run parallel as in asynchronous in parallelism is not the same thing parallelism is not is doing a lot of things at once it looks like the same but this are actually different ideas asynchronous is about structure while parallelism is about execution when running when running something asynchronously it means a non blocking execution without waiting for completion instead of parallelism means running multiple separate tasks at the same time as in the, as independent unit of works okay we continue to function this is the image for functional programming the output of its function is dependent only on its input argument values therefore calling the same function twice has to always return the same value it based on the declarative programming in the sense of using expression instead instead of statements the functional programming paradigm trace program flows and evaluation of function it uses several concepts where the most important for us are eliminating the side effect avoiding mutable data function as first class citizen and higher order function okay uh, i will take a functional example from javascript this is the example from javascript the higher order function have a similar very similar meaning and have to do at least one of this the first uh, take a function as an argument and the second return a function as a result in functional programming this concept of higher order function is often used in connection with methods on collection such as map filter reduce concat and zip okay we i uh, have uh, give a little explain about some programming paradigms and now we back to directive programming this is the marble diagram for understand for understanding reactive streams as we can see in the first timeline that is the data stream and the second timeline this is also data stream and there is merge operator then the data stream become in a timeline then there is a filter operator that filter data so data with values less than 4 will be filter and the result is in this timeline there is just 3 and 1 and there is a map operator so the data will be 4 and 2 reactive programming is yet another programming paradigm 
It is based on the ability to easily express, e express data flow and find automatic propagation of change. This reactive concern with this following data flows, propagation of change, and easily express data flow. And what is the data flow? The data flow in reactive programming, we, we want to think about variable as values that change over time. For example, this could be a mouse position, user click, or data coming via web socket. Basically, any event-based system can be considered also as a data stream. And what is the propagation of change? Propagation of change. A very nice example for this is a spreadsheet editor. Uh, we can see this uh, single cell to C1 is A1 plus B1. If we change to cell A1 and B1, it will be propagated to the C1. In a programmer mindset, this is uh, related to observable design pattern, where A1 and B1 are observable and C1 is an observable. And well, we continue to express easily express data flow. The first part of about the data flow and propagation of chains may be similar with observable design pattern with iterables. And for this, we we can do it easily by functional programming. And this is a simple explanation about uh, what is the observable decision pattern. The observable decision pattern, also known as publish subscribe pattern, is a behavioral decision pattern which defines one to many relationship between objects such that when one object changes its state, all dependent objects are notified and updated automatically. This principle is very similar also with Zen Event Manager in Zen Framework. Uh, I don't know, in, in other framework, maybe Symfony also have even nature like this, or Laravel, maybe. Now we, uh, now we have seen that principle on the reactive programming paradigm, which, which is uh, not completely new for us. And we can start thinking about how to put it all together. In other words, what library or framework do we really need in order to start writing reactive code in PHP. Okay, uh, this, there is a uh, reactive X or just RX. This is a set libraries in various language make, that make reactive programming easy, even in language where concept and synchronous and functional programming are clumsy, such as PHP. Uh, reactive extension is uh, Library to introduce certain principle and one of the possible way to approach reactive programming. Uh, reactive extension were originally made by Microsoft for .NET and called RxNet. Later, it was ported by Netflix to Java as RxJava, and now there are over a dozen supported language. The most probably being RxJS for the JavaScript implementation. This is the very basic example of RxPHP usage. Can you see the code? This is the very basic. Uh, the, the purpose is for this script is to, to print string length, string length of the fruits on the variable fruits. In this example, we have an array to be streamed by observable, that is the fruits variable, and two operators. The operators are map and filter, and one observer. This observable can be chained with operators, yeah, map and filter, and the observable have the, subs have the subscribe method. This is used by observer to start receiving values and the, at the end of the change. We use 
the observer as callback observer, which has three functions as arguments. The first is called when the next item is ready to emit it. And the second is called when the error has occurred. This could be any type of error represented by an instance of the exception class. And the third is called when, the, when there are no more items to be emitted. And this is the output of script. The first next 10 charts. This is come from the watermelon. This is come from watermelon. And the second charge is come from the strawberry. And the next eight charge is come from the pineapple. The, the grape is not counted because there is a filter for the strength length. If the length of string, it just processes the string with length uh, greater than five. And this is the complete, it means the, the process has been complete. As we, as we see, uh, these observables like iterating an array, but actually they are different. This is the difference between observable and iterating an array. Observables are like a push model where a value is pushed down to the operator chain when it's ready. This is very important because it's the observable that decides when it should be emitted to, to the next value. The, inter the internal logic of observable can do whatever it needs and still remain completely hidden. And iterating the array is like a pull model. We be pulling one, on, one item after another. This is the model diagram also uh, for observable. Observable behave like a data stream. Observable knows when it has emitted all its item or when an error has occurred and able to send proper notification, proper notification down the chain. This is the chain for representing the, this is the diagram for representing the chain. Where it, this is at the top, uh, this is observable, then there is map filter, map operator, and filter operator, and this is the lattice is observable. It's around so the direction of propagation of items and notification. This is the observable. It has uh, it will call three methods from the its observer. That is on next. This will call when the next item is ready to immediate. This is on error. The notification call when an error has occurred. And this is on complete. Is called when there are no more items to be emitted. Observable can call three different methods on their observers. Each observable can emit zero or more items. Each observable can send one error or one complete notification, but never both. In RxPHP, every operator takes a callable as an argument. Perhaps it call internally if the callable throws exception. Then this exception is, says, is sent as on error notification. This is the example. This is the observable. We create the observable from array. And we do checking here. If we found a berry on the string, we throw the exception. This exception is fruit, fruits with berry rejected. So there is, so this is the 
this is what we'll call the on error okay let we check the result this is the result it just print the length of the first the first the first of read and because and the second of read is strawberry so it throw an error so the error will will handle by the on error method when an when an error occur no more items were emitted so when there is an error throw so the emitter will not chain again there is also no complete notification and there is no complete this is because when observer is an error it automatically unsubscribe okay i will talk about the rxpsp basic principle and this is the components of rxpsp these are uh, components uh, there is observables and observers i have give a little explain about it there's also singles subject is possible scheduler and operators this is the addition for the observable observable emits an item observable observer subscribe to observable and observable notify data is immediate and error is occur in other words observable are source of values observers can subscribe to observable in order to be notified when the next item is ready or items have been emitted or an error has occurred the main difference between an observable in uh, this reactive programming and the observer reason pattern is an observable can you can tell you when all the data has been emitted and when an and when an error occurs all three type of events are consumed by observer in rxpsp uh, there, there is uh, there are uh, three type of observ observable so the observable can be created by this there is a array observable range observable iterator observable the array observable is this creates an observable from an array and emit all values right after the first observer subscribe the range observ observable this generates a sequence of number from a predefined range and the uh, iterator observable this is iterates and emits each item in iterable this can be any array wrap as iterator so this is how to create the observable all built in observable in our space we can be instantiated easily by calling static method from the rx observable in space the following list represent the three observable mentioned before also it usually easier to use static calls than to instantiate observable directly okay we continue to observer observer are consumer of observable the constructor takes three optional arguments representing callables for each type of signal the first on next like before on error and incomplete uh, in other words uh, observable react to uh, an observer react to observable we have already seen uh, the callback observer class yeah we takes three optional arguments representing callables for each type of signal this is the sample of observable the we create our own observable class for reusable to test what is going on on inside of observable chains <laughs> okay we implement three method there is a complete and next and error this is a singles singles are like observables but the only difference is that they always emit just one value in our space hp we don't 
distinguish any difference between observable and singles. So we can use the observable just method for this. Okay, on this example, we create an observable with just one value, that is uh, 100, and we set the subscriber or observ observer is print value yeah, that we created before here. This is the observer, and we use this on this. We set the observable as 100, and this is the output. It just emit one value. This, this is the code. We, the observable have a 100 for value, and this is was ju just one value. Then we use the observer yeah, we created before here, and the result is here. Just one value emit to observer. Okay, there is also subject as component of RxPHP. The subject is class that acts an observable and observer at the same time. This means that it can be uh, it can subscribe to an observable just like uh, an observer, and also emit values like um, observable does. Eventually, it can also emit its own values independently of its source observable. In order to see how the subject class can be used in different situation, I will give example based on the same example we used at the beginning of the slide. This is how the subject works. This is we, we I, I use the subject as observable. I create the I instance the object and add operator, map and filter and also add the subscribe method and use the print value observer yeah the we created before. So to emit the values I just call the on next. I call for our next method, the first grape, watermelon, strawberry, and pineapple. So the output is next 10 charts. This is come from watermelon. And next 10 charts, this come from strawberry. And next 8 charts come from a pineapple. Because we have a filter in this. We just process that data for the length is greater than 5. Okay, this is the subject as observable. This is subject as observer. I create the subject, then add a filter, and add subscribe with the observer. And this is the fruit array. Then I create the observable based on the array, and add map operator, and add subscribe to the subject the ob subject object from the the above so this is the subject act an as an observer before the subject is act uh, observable and this example he also can be used as an observer And there is also the example. Uh, this is subject in the middle of operator of chain. This is the array for the fruits. I cut the subject. Then I add filter to the subject. And I add, I add subscribe to the print value, the observer. And create the observer from the variable. And add map function and add subscribe subscribe to the subject this is the example for subject we can use subject in the middle of operator of chain and as we can see the result the output also same with the previous example yes. the output also same okay we continue to disposable uh, 
our RX implementation uh, internally use the dispose pattern. You can read about more dispose pattern in Wikipedia. This design decision has two reasons. The first, to be able to unsubscribe from an observable, and the second, to be able to release all data used by the observ observable. And in RxPHP, there are also scheduler. Observable and operators usually don't execute their work directly, but use an instance of the scheduler to decide how, when it should be executed. In most situations in RxPHP, we don't have to even worry about the scheduler because if, if we not set manually, it, our observable and operators internally use the immediate scheduler class which execute all action immediately without any further logic. So uh, this scheduler can be also combined with even loop from React PHP. Okay. This is the example. Applying an even loop from React PHP for observable. This is the way how to do it. So no problem if we don't prepare the scheduler, we can use even loop or use the default scheduler from the Rx PHP. Okay, the in we continue to operator. The in Rx PHP operator and in Rx uh, operator modif is to use to modify data flow and it also can return another observables and allow chaining of operator calls and in Rx PHP there are m about 40 operators and we have used some operators before we have used filter, map and I will give uh, some explanation, not, but not, my, not, not much, for how operators glue this all together. But uh, we have done much time for explaining this all operators. Maybe just take some operators yeah, we used before. Okay, we start from filter. The behavior of filter operator is the same. It just works with data flow instead of arrays. This means it receives items from its source, the preceding observable, and propagates them to its consequent observer or chain operator. This is the marble diagram. Can you see? So in the first line, in the first row, this is the data stream. There, there is a 5, 10, 12, 20, and 18. Then this is the filter. The, f the filter is filtering the data stream, and the result will be 10, 12, 20, and 18. This was uh, pretty simple. Uh, this marble diagram may, may be comfortable a way of representing data flows without worrying about implementation detail. Okay, there is also. Uh, concat operator. This operator is similar with merge. Merge is this is this 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 is merge operator used for this diagram. So this concat is similar with match. The operator match uh, multiple observer into one observable. It internally subscribe to each in input observable in order one after another. This is the diagram. Uh, as we can see, the first row, there is a 10, 12, 20, and 18. And in the second, second row, there is 20 and 14. So the concat operator match all into one data stream. As you can see, the, they are now in one data stream. Okay, this, this is the, maybe a explanation or theory about the RxPHP. 
maybe I will give a simple demonstration about how to add a simple logic to observable and observer and using RxPHP. Okay. You can see the code. See? Uh, we just use film. Okay. This is better. Check. One size. Okay. Can you hear? It's better. Okay. This is a, a simple script for retrieving data from JSON placeholder album. JSON placeholder album is fake JSON. Maybe you you know about the site. Maybe. This is the data. So in this example, I retrieve data from this from this JSON. Okay, this is the dat data, and this is the script. Okay, uh, the first I call the the class. There is a I create a JSON place holder album is observable then I create the operator and I create the observer and also for HTTP client I use Gazelle and this is the I create the observer of uh, observable so because this not limited I think the, this is contain about uh, 100 data so I so for uh, for using by using this rx we can set the limit using the take method okay we just limit to 10 and i use the custom operator i created before to fit to to read the json and then this, this is a custom observer okay i will open the This is the the first we open the observable. This is the observable. I extend from array observable. This is the default URL. Okay, this is the this is how to the make HTTP request. And the result is make as observable by is a right observable construct. Okay, this is the observable, and this is the operator. This is the operator. So in this operator, I just filter. I just take the Title from the JSON. This, I just take this text. Okay, and I make the values to observer. And if the result there's no ID, it will throw an error. Okay, I will open the observer. Okay, this is the observer. This observer just print the value. Okay, and this is we back to the script for imp that which uh, implemented the all operator observer and the observable. This is the script. 
Okey. I'll run it. I'll run the using Docker. Please take the ten of data from the JSON. Yes. If I increase the two ten two ten. Take twenty in the data. Okay, this is a short example for how to add the logic to observable and how to create the observer and operator. Back to the. Okay, the summary. The first, using reactive programming, make our code concise, clear, and readable. Maybe we can make the sample case using iterating an array, but if you extend add more logic, maybe it will be too complicated. By using the reactive, you can extend it, and the code is more readable. Reactive programming. Reactive programming and reactive extension provides a development model to tame the asynchronous beast. So, this using asynchronous and combining the power of reactive programming and PHP is the good approach to create modern PHP application. And using reactive programming does not transform our system into a reactive system because reactive system are the next level. This is a short input for reactive system. This is maybe a confusion part. Using reactive programming does not build a reactive system. Reactive system as defined a reactive manifesto are an architectural style to build responsive distributed system. Reactive system could be seen as distributed system don't write. A reactive system is characterized by four properties. The first, responsive. A reactive system needs to handle requests in reasonable time. And there is a resilient reactive system must stay responsive in the face of failures, maybe crash, timeout, or 500 error. So it must be designed for failures and deal with them appropriately. And scalable reactive system must stay responsive under various loads. Consequently, it must scale up and down and be able to handle the load with minimal resource. And even driven components from reactive system interact using asynchronous messaging phase. Okay, this is the results I use for learning reactive programming, and you can use this results also. There is a PHP reactive programming book from Martin Scora, and learning even driven PHP with React PHP book from Sergey Zug, and from the Reactive X website. Httpreactivex.io. Thank you. Is there any question? Or you can also take some the code from this repository for this slide. This is the example of RxPHP. Okay, we can take one question. Do we have any one who has a question for uh, Dolly? No? Yes? Okay. Yeah, thank you, Dolly.